Herbie Hancock is a jazz keyboard player from Chicago. He uh, started doing uh, albums under his own name in the 60s. He was in a, a Miles Davis project that produced several albums in the late 60s, and he emerged out from that uh, at the end of the 60s. Um, that was a stable that Miles Davis had that seemed to produce some people who went on to do all sorts of interesting things. Mostly, they went on to cross over from the jazz world into kind of more fusion stuff. And this is true for Herbie Hancock. He became known in the 70s and beyond as crossing over into uh, more mainstream electronic stuff, uh, pop, funk. Uh, he even had a hit single with a, 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 a track called Rocket. Um, he has got a typically large uh, discography for a uh, jazz musician. Hi, my name is Dan. So this was the 11th album that was uh, uh, released by Herbie Hancock with him as leader slash solo, what, you know, whatever you want to call it in that. This is the jazz world, so these things get complicated. I'm pretty sure, no, I, I am sure, this is my first encounter with this album. Um, and apparently it was considered to be a commercial flop when it came out. Nobody wanted to buy it, or very few people. Um, so let's do some uh, description and some opinion at the same time. So it's all instrumental. It's kind of on the edge of jazz, but it's got elements of funk and some other things in there as well. Um, it has a tendency towards uh, long tracks and to have this kind of uh, trance-like continuum feel, which is possibly informed by Miles Davis uh, doing stuff earlier than this, certainly um, with uh, other stuff going on in uh, in the crowd rock world and in the uh, psychedelic rock world as well. This kind of... Uh, the, and funk as well, this kind of long tracks so that just kind of you're settling into a groove and you just keep going and you develop it. As you go. There are three tracks, so unusually I think I'm going to describe all of them. And I think also, it's probably worth doing because they're actually quite different in some ways from each other. So the first one is Rain Dance. It's about nine and a half minutes. And um, it's the, the kind of uh, central idea here is electronic noises. Um, so there's lots of kind of bleepy, blip, blip, blip kind of synth stuff. Um, think kind of early Tangerine Dream or Jean-Michel Jarre and that sort of stuff. So, you know, analog synth sounds. Along with that, we've got jazz instruments. So we've got jazz drumming, we've got an upright bass, we've got an electric piano, and it, uh, it it's kind of got a nice uh, funky rhythm to it. Uh, there's some nice jazz improvisation. It's all uh, interesting in this combination of electronic and uh, real instruments. It's not a connection that um, is a natural one to think of as going, you know, electronic and jazz together, but yeah, I, I felt like it worked. And in my opinion, that was the best track of the three. Uh, so the second uh, track is about 10 minutes, and it's called Hidden Shadows. And this is more like a slow funk, kind of funk rock kind of thing. Um, but uh, in it's got a, a pattern that has, I have no idea how you would split it into bars, but I, I kind of, in my head, it split into four bars, and then this pattern kept repeating. But I think the total count of beats... I might be wrong, but I tried to do it. I think there's 19 beats between them, but each one's a different length. Um, and then, so this is done as a backbone for the track, and it keeps going on. And then over the top, there's uh, floated stuff um, and uh, you know, other instruments and improvisation and stuff going on in that. Um, so I, I felt that the most interesting aspect of this was the, the kind of the weird rhythmic aspect of this, of this backing with the the bass and the drums, um, the bass has a line that basically is repeated all the way through. And it was all right, but it was my least favourite track out of the three. I guess one of them had to be. Um, and then the last one is Hornets, which is 20 minutes long, so it's about twice the length of either of the other two. And this is a more straightforward funk groove, uh, kind of, you know, 4-4 four, four groove, um, and funk drums particularly. And then on the top of that fairly free-form improvisation going on, 
Um, and there's a lot of stuff going on at different times. The stuff that pulls against the <clears throat> against the rhythm. There's the kind of brass stuff. Uh, there's a lot of brass in here and other percussion instruments. Um, now, despite it not being listed in the list of instruments here, I'm pretty convinced that one of the things that's being played here is kazoo. Uh, it just I find it hard to imagine that there is a brass instrument that sounds so like kazoo. And it's used really well. Um, so whatever it is, whether it's a kazoo or not, and it's it, it fits with the mix. But I think this is where the the title of the track has come from: as hornets, is this kind of buzzy feeling of something that's buzzing around. There's also at some point some electronic bubbling kind of noises going on. Um, the general feel here is of of uh, jazz funk. So this you can probably work out is my second favorite track out of the three. Uh, I did feel it was a bit long. It was a bit laboured at uh, 20 minutes. I might have preferred it to be another 10 minute and then have a different idea. You know, four ideas instead of three on one album. That'd be great. Um, I quite like this album, I have to say. Um, so, the uh, uh, as always, I read some stuff uh, about the album. There's not a huge amount about it on uh, Wikipedia, um, but there was... Uh, um, it referenced a Rolling Stone review of it uh, that uh, said that this was going further than Miles Davis's Bitches Brew and On the Corner. Um, and I know that the, the comparison is a, a natural one to make because Herbie Hancock was involved with that kind of that phase of Miles Davis's stuff. Um, and so they, they were saying it, and they were kind of talking about going out into outer space with it and being a bit flowery with it. Um, I found it more accessible than those Miles Davis albums, and fun as well, the, uh, than either of those. I'm, I, we will come to those later in this list. Um, but um, uh, from my experiences in the past with uh, those albums, I've not enjoyed them as much as I enjoyed this album. Now, that may be because um, it's moving into a more accessible area for me, coming into the funk stuff. Uh, which is something that I, I generally really enjoy. So, once again, we come to that point. I've told you what I think of the album, and I'd love to know what you think of this album. Any s stories about context, or your, your experiences with it, or just what you think, um, how you feel it, uh, stands up amongst other um, Herbie Hancock stuff, you know, anything you want to throw in, uh, whether it's short or long. Uh, I've got here, so please do uh, add a comment. Put the comments, and that's it from me for now.